everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Earth Station One podcast. That's right, folks. We're back and we have a good one for you tonight. I know I say that every week, but every week is so good on this podcast. And this is a good one because we got season two of Sweet Tooth. That's right. Our favorite little boy with antlers is back. He's such a Gus is such a great kid. And it's going to be a ton of fun to talk about this one because a lot happens this season. And the first it always felt like for me that the first season was set up and now this is the like the beef of the story and it it is it's just a ton of fun and we've got great characters great character arcs and it's gonna be a ton of fun to walk, talk about this netflix series and as we always like to say if you have not watched it yet put us on pause we will be we will wait here for you and everything you know And, you know, Joseph's here waving at everybody like, I'll wait here too. So it's okay. Go, go, go. (laughs) Right. Because we are going to spoil the hell out of this one. And it's going to be a great (laughs) one to do. And I don't want to ruin it for anybody because, you know, let's dive in with both feet because we got a great one. Let's welcome Joseph Martinez to the show. Welcome, sir. How are you? Good. How are you guys doing? Long time no talk. It's been great. It's great to see you. You guys too. You want to tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Uh, my name is Joseph Martinez, uh, better known as Chameleon Cosplay. Um, haven't been doing a whole lot of the cosplay as of late, but you know, hoping to get back into it again. But uh, but no, other than that, just regular nine to five job, and then uh, do fun stuff like this. You know, when I'm not working. Well, you. It's like when I put a call out for folks to talk about sweet tooth tonight and you were like you were like i volunteer i volunteer and it's like (laughs) wow it's like okay it's like it's like there's no way you were going to let me say no anyway so it's just like yeah Yeah. and and the the most random one which which is sweet tooth for me like (laughs) off uh, like off character but i just love the show like it i didn't even know about it and then uh we started watching and i was like wow and then just started diving right into it researching it because i didn't know about it so you didn't and, know uh, about the comic or anything like that before. no no I, I started with the show and then after season one i just started researching i was like this is amazing so yeah yeah when you guys were looking for somebody to talk about season two i was like oh, i gotta talk about this <laughs> that, is, awesome. that is awesome that is really really awesome and of course mr mike gordon how are you my friend howdy you ready to talk a little bit sweet tooth i am i am let's uh let's uh talk all about hybrids oh we will we definitely will and we want to hear from you guys at home now that we know you've watched this and you know you, you won't be spoiled you know please write us feedback at our station one.com we definitely would love to hear from you guys okay mr mike take it away well, yeah, let's start with Joseph, because um, we already reviewed season one on our show uh, shortly after it aired, uh, and we were very high on it. Uh, Mike and I uh, have read the comics, so we're familiar with that. Have you read all the comics, Mike? Yes. Okay. Um, so I just, uh, yeah, I just want to make sure. So um, how did you discover uh, Sweet Tooth? Uh, well, I, I saw when it was first announced before season one, um, and I saw the involvement of uh, Robert Downey Jr. with uh, his wife, and that that was number one for me. Like, this is interesting if he's putting his name, you know, on this show, putting, you know, backing it. Um, also, you know, that it was a DC, uh, DC comic um, property before it. So, um, so I looked into it, and then we watched all of season one, and we were like, the the concept of of this fairy tale and this dystopian future was just like why didn't i think of this like and why how did i not know about this before now so season one like we watched and rewatched here at, at our house um so season two was a no-brainer like we were anxious to see what was going to happen and now even after season two is like, oh my God, what's going to happen next because there's so many so many twists and deviations because i went I went and researched and looked uh, looked up the actual comic book, saw that it had already had its run and ended. Um, so, of course, you know, I spoiled myself, but I wanted to see what happened with the <laughs> characters. And uh, then to see season two, I was like, whoa, they uh, this really took a turn. So, um, 
so yeah i discovered it like a, a lot of people like you know uh, from the netflix show um and then have been hooked ever since yeah. Well, the good news is, is that, I mean, from, uh, you know, I've read the the miniseries and even the, um, the follow up, uh, the return, which is sort of a sequel. Mm -hmm. um, and there's enough that the series deviates from, if you will, um, that oh, big time. It doesn't really spoil. I don't think the uh, I mean, if someone's looking for a panel to screen adaptation, they're probably going to be disappointed, but, uh, but because the show does a lot of things differently. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them are good and some of them uh, maybe don't work as well as others, but um, uh, so overall you've been pretty pleased with season one and you were anxious. Did you watch season two right away when it dropped? Uh, yes. I think we did like two or three episodes a day. Oh, that's the beauty of Netflix. Even I know as much as I love the Disney Plus, where you have to wait for the uh, episode, like old school television, we couldn't wait. It was so good. <laughs> well, yeah, I do like the way they set up, especially Sweet Tooth, with every episode is sort of ending on a cliffhanger. So you're like, oh, I can't wait. I need to need to watch it. Um, although I will say that sometimes the binging is like, man, it's like it's like too much too soon. Uh, I you know it feels like it's one long eight hour movie. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, when I'm watching it, because I did watch it, I binged like it all like last weekend, and that's a lot to take in, and it's pretty intense. Oh, it's very intense um, to take in all at once. Yeah, and uh, I must admit, you know, the fact that it deals with uh, hybrids, which are half animal, half human uh, folks uh, that are been created by, well, we're not sure exactly what yet. We're learning that in the second season, we get a little bit more answers on that um but yeah it takes place in a post apocalyptic a post pandemic world um or actually the, they're still going they're still it's still the pandemic, pandemic. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah which is which uh, is another weird parallel yeah which uh, if it was intended to be that way or not just like what has been happening the past three to four years it was just creepy to just season one and season two just that reminder of what has been going on around us and the similarities that you see in the show is like that's uh, kind of creepy yeah um i can tell you that the comic was written way before uh the pandemic happened mm -hmm. and i think this was greenlit before like i think robert downey jr and everybody was interested in it before the pandemic i know a lot of it was filmed afterwards so mm -hmm. I, it certainly had some ramifications and season two i think reflects more of what you know we recognize as pandemic than maybe this first season did but mm -hmm. um what were your thoughts overall on season two as a whole uh i i liked it uh i i would say 90 percent. there were some parts for me that were kind of slow like uh especially like around the the story with uh dr addy um it, it got kind of like slow and repetitive for, for just a little bit but other than that, it was just it, it's it, it made it to where we wanted to, like, keep on watching episode after episode, like one after the other, just to see what was going to happen. It just kept us, you know, hooked the whole time. So I, I, I really enjoyed it. Mike, what about you? What, uh, what did you feel about season two as well? Season two, I it was interesting because I loved season one and I loved the comic. So it was I thought I knew what I was going to get and I thought I was expecting certain things to happen but they went away from the comic in, in some ways and it was interesting that they did and I thought it was for the better that they did because I thought season two moved a lot smoother than I was expecting some of it was a little more slow also but it all ended up exactly like oh my god we have to wait you know i don't know if i could stay up till four in the morning to watch the next two episodes and everything because i wanted to you know finish it up and everything because netflix puts everything out at once and it's just you know binge watch binge watch and but i love the characters and i love the pacing of the season overall i love the evolution of the characters you had some of the characters end where exactly you thought they were going to end. Others past surpassed 
hugely and some fell big time. So it was very, very interesting to see. Yeah, I think I remarked this when we reviewed the first season, but the comic is a lot darker, oh, a lot more intense than, a lot more than, violent. The, yeah, than the series, which not a bad thing, not a good thing, just a thing. Like, And mm-hmm. to be honest with you, uh, with everything that's been going on, pandemic and all that kind of stuff, I mean, I've been kind of staying away from shows that are too violent and uh, intense. Uh, that's why I still haven't watched Last of Us. Uh, I just don't feel like getting gut punched uh, on a regular basis. Um, but I and, and and I got worried when I started this because I kind of forgotten that that Sweet Tooth is a little is a lot lighter than the comic. So when it first started, I kept thinking and plus I had on my brain, you know, just seeing Guardians of the Galaxy and all of that, you know, ramifications of animal cruelty and crossbreeding and and dna manipulation and everything like that and i was like oh god like is this going to be as intense as that was even uh and you know it took me a little while to you know to realize you know hey mike i really don't think like i kept thinking they're going to kill bobby they're going to kill bobby they're going to kill kill bobby and i'm not going to be able to handle it i'm not going to be able to handle that even though look all right i'm going to say it right out bobby looks you can tell he's a puppet, right? You can tell he's a puppet. There's no, oh, there's yeah. no like fooling anybody as far as CG puppetry, whatever with Bobby, right? It's not even and a the others, person in a costume or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, it's nothing. It's just, I mean, I think the puppetry looks great, and I and I I, I can recognize that it's a puppet, and it doesn't affect it at all because I think Bobby's a cool character, uh, especially at the end when he ends up with a tank. Uh, yes. uh, but I was like, you know, all of the creatures. And that are there uh, are the hybrids, I should say. I mean, none of them look like real realistic. Um, I mean, to a point, um, I think Wendy, her makeup is great. Oh, um, but uh, and I think I mentioned that in the first season. But um, yeah, I mean, it is interesting to me that you can take something like Bobby. And even though I recognize it's a puppet. I was just like so protective of him for the entire run of this season because I I really thought they was gonna he was gonna get killed, and I don't know how I would I probably wouldn't have reacted well with it because I don't I don't remember Bobby being in the comic. He it it he was but he wasn't as cute. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Okay, yes, <laughs> and, yes, uh, yes. Okay, I got it now. Okay, yeah, I, and uh, yeah, yeah it's, Jeff it's, Jeff Lemire yeah. doesn't draw cute really. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah and Gus it, isn't that cute. No. Yeah. Nobody, nobody in a Jeff Lemire. Yeah, we we uh, had the but... we had the same reaction uh, for Bobby here in our house. You know, if if something happens to Bobby, we're gonna march, you know, straight into Netflix and <laughs> Netflix burn it down. And burn it down. <laughs> um, it, it's the uh, it's the Grogu effect. Is is the Grogu for for this show? You know, it's it's that cute little character, and it's like that that was the one thing. Just like you said, the episode after episode is like, do not hurt one hair. Off of that little beaver because you know i'm gonna lose it uh yeah. and then the tank scene just i just lost it it was hilarious oh, yeah it took me a while because i, I thought the like, all right yeah. they're not gonna they know what they're doing they're not gonna kill him because it's not that show you know yep. Yep. if it was james gunn doing it i would be really worried about bobby uh because <laughs> we know that james gunn is not afraid to do stuff like that um and if this was the comic well i think he's okay in the comic i can't remember anyway um, it doesn't matter. Well, if you think about it, Mikey, the only um, this whole season, the only two children that died, two hybrids, yeah, the two hybrids, two was the alligator boy, and that's the only one we met. And the uh, chameleon, and yeah, the chameleon and the, one, the chameleon. We didn't. I don't think we knew him, did we? Yeah, he was. We saw him at the end of last season. Okay, because he was yeah. part of the kids that lived in the zoo with everybody. It made me mad because they were both reptiles, and I'm a big reptile guy. I couldn't, I, <laughs> that, I couldn't that tell. Made me mad. You couldn't tell, but from behind you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, so, so, how do you feel about that aspect of the show, uh, Joseph? How do you feel that that is a that because that's a lot of what this show does is it 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 kind of deals with that sort of animal cruelty and uh, all of that. Um, do you think it does it well? Do you think it plays around with it too much, or it it does it well? But it it also is that that fine line because the, as we've said, these are hybrids. 
So these are also part human. So you're not only dealing with the animal aspect of it. These are little children. And and he, Abbott doesn't care. He's just he's just wanting quote unquote the cure and which also changed a little bit from the comic book because in the comic book he was a real a-hole um this this time around he has a quote unquote reasoning behind it just to get the cure and and by all means necessary so they they give him kind of a uh, character development or an ideal um <laughs> but at the, uh, yeah, yeah loosely but at the end of the day these are children animal whatever you want to call it like he's it's it's just wrong <laughs> they're killing kids, basically. yeah they're killing yeah. kids and, and yeah the thing that they've set up the premise as far as we know that the only way to keep people from getting the sick like the only way that you can create a vaccine or a quote-unquote cure is with the uh it's a it's a spinal tap right on the hybrids mm -hmm. right like by getting that fluid or whatever um and I so you something, i thought it had something to do with some, the fluid in their brains yeah which is and, it? Yeah. and this and that's even like not even a 100 percent like uh completed cure i think it, it reaches like 96 right. 99 something like that and then at the very end you realize like you don't have to do this at all like it's trans it's the the cure some, something similar to that is transmitted through the air through the purple plant um i don't know if you remember when the doctor has sweet tooth's horn in his hand or his uh -huh. part of his antler um he kind of like realizes like we don't have to do this so well, I, I oh think, i didn't I, thought, I didn't get that did you get that man? no i i got it that it was something to do with the antler itself uh, yes yeah it, it has to do so yeah, I think he realizes thing. at the end that he they don't have to kill the kids pretty much, and he realizes realizes it too late. It's interesting because he uses Pete, right, the alligator boy, Peter, yes. Peter, uh, to create a hundred percent like cure. Boom, it's gone. Right, like he 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 runs his tests, and it's done. Like he creates a cure. He thinks it's great. He thinks it's going to work, and then he tests it again, and it doesn't work. And he can't get it to work after that. And then he holds up the antler and he says, that's the key. Obviously, Gus is the key because he's the he's patient zero. Right. As far as the hybrids go, we Got find it. out that Gus for sure. We find out and confirm that he is the first hybrid. Yes. Um, and but it wasn't the creation of the hybrids that caused the sick and the outbreak. I no. thought that was really interesting. It, we finally the, get the we finally find out that created, it's yeah the right, sickness okay. was created in a lab and right. the same way we're the same lab where gus was created correct and it was supposed to possibly create you know extend human life and that's why the scientist in you know basically injected herself with it and instead it turned into the deadly virus that started killing everybody because you know and she was patient zero on that aspect Yes, yes. She and had God. injected it into herself mm -hmm. and she got the sick and she was, yeah, the first one to get the sick. And from her, it spread mm -hmm. and, uh, and took over the world, took out, what, exactly. what did they say? Huh? Yeah. No, 90%? 90% like of humanity. And That's brutal. It is. And, but it's interesting because Gus was created as the antigen for it. For the virus was he yeah, i thought he was just i thought he was just created because they were just messing around doing other like he was that's why they create he was created you know as you know that his you know something in his blood or something was there to help create you know to help fight the the virus because the virus was already created and so they had to create something with the antigen and it had some and they said, you know, he'll he'll be able to mass produce from his horns. He'll be he'll be able to mass produce the cure. I think, I think, the whole thing stems from something that is found in the in Alaska, right? Uh, we find out that something is found in Alaska. Uh, they bring it to the lab, and through that lab work, Gus is created, and this virus is created. 
I got a feeling that they were linked because of the thing that was brought back from Alaska, but I didn't think one was the cause of the other. Um, I thought they were just two separate things. And, and I don't know if they've really explained that yet, or maybe they will. Um, but I do know that, I mean, we have found out that Gus is a key because he's the first. No matter how you think of the what what you know how to cure, but then we do know that if you use a hybrid's blood or that uh, part of them, that because you have to kill them in order to get this cure or this treatment, they say that it does stop the sick for a while, and in one case only, it it can cure you. Now uh, that that one percent that hundred percent cure has not been used yet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh so uh from what I, did that said, surprise but... you guys i thought yeah. for sure someone was going to get injected with that i thought uh what's your name was going to get ingested with that uh, inject, injected with that oh the wife or no not the wife uh well i thought the wife was going to be injected with it first but then i thought um uh amy eden was going to be uh the one who's created the haven for the hybrids yeah. Uh, I thought she was going to get injected with it because all of a sudden she, you know, started twiddling, twiddling her pinky. And I was like, okay, so, the, but she refused. Yeah, I can't, mm-hmm. I can't do that. I can't, I can't. <laughs> that must be tough. It must be a, that must be a special effect when they, when they shake their pinkies. Cause that's, that's not easy to do. My eyebrow does that it was like, if I eat a lot of red meat. <laughs> you have the so, sick so, so much you know <laughs> but it's interesting because they also did not they have not revealed also how you know gus was the first of the hybrid children how then how did that spread to every child born around the world you know from that point on they Great haven't said anything like that i mean yeah was that part of the sick yeah that's that's a great question yeah we don't yeah, we so we don't know everything that we still have a lot of mysteries to what happened in that lab. Um, I imagine we'll get it, you know, when we finally encounter and really can talk to uh, the woman that uh, he refers to as Mama, and I can't think of her name right now. Uh, Wendy, is that right? No, uh, Wendy's the girl. Wendy. Uh, I don't see Wendy. it here. Yeah, Wendy's the pig girl. Yeah. Oh, Birdie. Birdie. Yes. Uh yes. Gertrude Miller. Yep. Uh geneticist. And she's up in the Arctic uh doing her thing and yep. uh trying to figure out what's going on and how to cure everybody. Mm-hmm. She's been there for a while. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I don't I got confused too in the show, like which when we ever we cut to her, whether those were flashbacks or not. That's true. The only time I was kind of surprised when uh, Bear talks to her on the uh, walkie-talkie or whatever, yeah, because I was like, "Oh, this is current." Satellite phone. (laughs) This is current. I was like, "Well, wait a minute! Didn't she get knocked out?" I mean, there was some a lot of confusing things there. I mean, I think they were shown out of order, you know, uh, sequentially anyway. Because I, uh, yeah, she was knocked out. She was pulled. She was, you know, pulled, and then somebody carried her over to the cave and then mm-hmm. next you know she's talking to bear and i'm like what uh yeah, they, so they went back and forth a couple of times with that mm-hmm. yeah that yeah so so anyway the main focus of this season though is not only is finding out about the cure about gus the route the how that was all created and everything like that and and what to do about it but also the the imposing force of the last men uh led by a very evil man general abbott <laughs> general abbott general abbott uh i, I i'll tell you what neil sandilands is his name that plays him mm-hmm. is really good yes. uh general abbott is fun to watch but he's really fun to hate yes uh yeah, yeah. joseph tell us a little bit more what you feel about general abbott and the Abbott family, uh, and that's that's exactly what I was going to say. Like uh, the the one of the MVPs, Johnny is uh, his brother. Um, he was one of the MVPs of of this season, and very surprising. I 
there was one split second I thought they were going to deviate from what happens to the character in the comic book, and uh, I was like, oh, cool, because, you know, you end up liking the dude, and then, nope, he kills his own brother. What a s- SOB. Um, it's, it, but the, but there was I'm surprised he didn't do it sooner. There, yeah, exactly what I was about to say. There felt like there was multiple times where he was going to kill his brother. Man, I got nervous for all of them sitting at that yeah. dinner. Yes, yes, it gave you, it gave you that that thanos vibe when he walked in you know you, it's something bad was going to happen and that dinner scene was like the, it was so tense it, it was it was really well done but it also told you like the, the explanation of of how he cares for his his brother everything like that so you know i found myself going like up and down back and forth like emotionally like man like you know you you don't really start caring for Abbott, but you, you see that at least he has his brother and, you know, a lot of what he was saying was true until, <laughs> until it wasn't. Um, and uh, it, 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 it's just crazy that is like you said, the actor is, is phenomenal and, and it gives you that vibe of, you know, when he's close, something bad is going to happen. Um, somebody's going to get hurt or killed. Um, but, what what I, what I was gonna say is that dynamic with his brother and and how he's uh, he ultimately was gonna get in the way of his plan. This guy is so blinded, has is so focused on what he wants to do. Not even a family, you know, is safe. So, I mean, everything, even the aesthetic uh, of of his costume, wardrobe, everything like that, is just striking. It, it From a cosplay well perspective, I mean, that looks badass, right? Like, if I saw him uh, hang, walking around a dragon con, I'd be like, oh, man, that is, yeah, that's yeah, awesome. I, I, I haven't I, seen a lot of Sweet Tooth costumes, actually, in, I, at conventions that I've been to, which is weird, because you'd think yeah. it'd be, like, made for it. Yeah, mm-hmm. might, or, might or might not have started buying pieces for it. <laughs> have to let my beard grow out a little bit. I'm already bald, so it works. <laughs> um, but I think also, um, you know, that how he feels about his brother, he's transferred to his role now. You know, he killed their dad in order to protect his brother. And I feel like that's his that's what, how he's wired now. He kills to protect people. Mm-hmm. He has taken it upon himself to be the guy. That's going to save everybody, including his brother. But in order to do that, he needs to kill people. And uh, I mean, it's not hard for us to believe, unfortunately, that the last man group is that outrageous as far as to be not a real thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean... The way they, the way that a lot of it's played out in this series, especially when we do the flash ga- flashbacks to Big Man, uh, I mean it, it, it strikes a little too close to home to some of the stuff that's going on right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, very much so. It's you know, and we don't try to get political on the show, but you know, there was. But this show of- is. Oh, I know. Yeah. It felt very much you were at a MAGA rally completely. This show is woke as hell. Oh, you think? <laughs> yeah, and That's a lot okay. of it, uh, when when you see the the initial part of the the last minute everything, it, even by Jeopard's like um, perception is brought on by necessity. He thinks he's going to gain access to find his family. That's what he was promised. He's like, all right, I'm going to do this. And that's just only his perspective. But how many people were promised X, Y, or Z or or indoctrinated to believe this is what we have to do for human mankind? This is we have to wipe out all these hybrids, everything like that. That's why they have so many followers. And it's just it's not all kumbaya. It's is it's a sad reality. Like you start with a couple people and it grows and grows and grows. And mm-hmm. they think they're doing it for a noble cause or like in Jeopard's case, he had that goal of finding his family, only to find out it's not going to happen. Yeah, we run across a number of characters that find that they are willing to kill for the people that they love. And uh, and and yes, Jeopard certainly is part of that. Um, and we see that it's transferred, you know, to Gus, both his guilt 
and his abilities to protect. I mean, he is willing to kill anybody when it comes to Gus, protecting him, uh, protecting Gus, that is. So I think, um, you know, I think that's pretty outstanding uh, as far as his character. But we do learn a little bit more from, about him. Uh, he seems to be not m as present in the in the first part of this, I think, a little bit. Is that in my in my no, you, there seems to be a part where their big man is kind of missing for a little while. He wasn't in yeah, the he was, couple episodes. Like, yeah, he was knocked out. Um, right. He was recovering. He got, he got I figured it was because he was filming Ted Lasso. Because <laughs> the actor's in Ted Lasso. Mm -hmm. Sam's dad. Yeah. Uh, and uh, only one episode, but still. He had to fly over there and then fly back. Because uh, this show feels very Canadian to me. Very Canadian. Do you feel that? Do you get that sense too, or is it mm -hmm. just me? Just no? you. Just you. No, no. It just it feels like I don't know. It just feels like it's I don't know. Has that feel to it? Anyway, uh, what's somebody else that you like following, uh, or you've enjoyed their arc this season, Joseph? Uh, <laughs> Bears was very interesting. Um, we kind of already knew her connection. Um uh in, to all different parts and how it ties into to the story but just to see just to see the lengths that she had to go through on her own to make it back to everybody that was very interesting and how she connected back to the animal army um that was pretty cool to see at the very end how that you know played out that for that forgiveness you know uh, arc in there with uh tig tiger or tigress mm -hmm. um that, just in time one... to get for them to get slaughtered yeah. Oh my yep. God. Yep. Yes, that was um, so horrifying. Yeah, but uh, it it I like how it added more layers to her story. Just to just it, everybody was pretty balanced throughout the the whole season, but you know she got she got a really good push in in the sentimental department. Absolutely, absolutely. I I, I think the uh, actress uh, is great that plays Bear. I had forgotten because I think now that I think about it, I think in the first season they established that Wendy was her sister. Yes. But of course, nobody knew that um, yeah. except for us watching. But I, I had completely forgotten so that when it was revealed in this season that she was a sister, I was like, oh, wow, that's a little convenient. But I guess it works. Um, uh, it seemed like it was played out a little bit. Uh, I don't know. I just felt like it was a, it felt a little too convenient to me that they were they were connected that way. But um, Mike, how did you feel about that? I thought it was you know the look on her face when she saw her sister was amazing, and kudos to the actress for pulling that off and everything. It was done very well. You know, Bear went through a lot this season, if you think about it. You know, you know, she, you know, had talked to the doctor up in Alaska at the end of the season, and she was separated from Big Man and Gus, you know. And so she literally then was still at the house. And, you know, when the, you know, the the militia came to you know because they were tracking they heard the the call and everything and it was just mm -hmm. real interesting and then what she went through having to join the army and everything last man the last man she was she joining the last, last man. man to to and it was it was very interesting to see which i guess includes women so oh, last men and women well you saw there was women in the group no, already just so just last like people that. you know just like just like the men that Name it after them and not of course the women, right? Yeah, still in that era, you know, it's you're also <laughs> <laughs> and it was but sure. it was interesting because you got you had a very interesting, you know, her thing and then her reckoning with the animal army and you know, with her, and I'm glad she made it to the end. I thought there was a couple times where I didn't think she was bear was gonna make it. Mm. And everything. Mm. you know i thought there was times even when even in the final episode when they were having the battle in the woods i thought you know that she you know that she would probably you know 
it would have been one of those things because I thought she was going to take out that other female soldier. But, you know, it's one of those things where they both took out and she's, you know, the the, one of the last things she says, I'm your sister, you know, type thing. (laughs) You know, I was fully expecting something like that. I was like, well, they're not going to have Wendy lose both her adopted mother and her sister at the same Mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, uh, but boy, they did fake us out in that last bit, I think, with uh, shooting Sweet Tooth, shooting Gus. Oh, and then the next was... thing, cutting to the grave. I was like, no. no. <laughs> I, was like, don't... I was like, what are you trying to pull here? I don't believe Gus is dead. Is he? <laughs> but that was that was just mean. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I like Bear's story. Uh, like I said, I, I had forgotten that uh, it was set up in the first season. So maybe it wasn't as convenient as I kind of thought. Uh, since they did set it up. But yeah, I, I appreciated watching Bear's story and everything she went through to get back to Gus and Big Man. Mm-hmm. It, it's interesting because you had mentioned earlier that the show reminded you a little bit of Canadi- of being a Canadian program and everything. The actress who plays Bear kind of reminds me of a actress who was on another series in the 80s. It was called You Can't Do That on Television. Yes, yes, I know who you're talking about. I know yeah. exactly who you're talking about. And she looks, they could be twins in a lot of ways. I think I crushed on her a little bit mm-hmm. growing up. So, and she was the I'll host. I'll, I'll let you guys talk about the 80s. <laughs> yeah, I know. I no, 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 it's okay. It's all good. We're not, that's okay. all the only thing. We're, so we're I, grown men that, now. And that was an 80s show. So that's probably why you were thinking of it. We're, we're we're over fifty now. That's just creepy. And no, we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> that was Mike Gordon who said that. Don't forget that at home. Phone. Absolutely. Uh, all right. So uh, let's talk about Doctor Singh and his wife Ronnie. Um, I I think now I'm fa- I'm hazy on season one. So please help me remind me. But I think in season two. He realizes that these hybrids can talk and they have intelligence. I think a lot of people have realized that in this season where they all thought that they were just hybrid animals. They were just more animal than people. Mm -hmm. Well, he heard Gus speak at the very, at the end of season one. Season one. Okay. And it was the first time he had ever heard a hybrid speak. But it does not, it does not seem to affect his, well... I get it. He wants to, you know, he's willing to kill in order to save his wife. Right. Um, but but he, it's interesting too, because yes, he's willing to kill, but he doesn't want to kill Gus because he sees intelligence in Gus. Mm-hmm. He does. I, he, you no, think he, he, is, is it just that, or is it the fact that he doesn't want to kill him because he's the alpha? At first is because he sees signs of intelligence and intelligence. being able to communicate. Then exactly. he realizes like there's more to this. There's one. a lot more to it that Gus has a connection. Oh, that's right. Because it's it's the him talking intelligence that leads him down like, where did you come from? And I and it leads him down that trail, right? Ex- yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, no, at first it was just he wasn't gonna he didn't want to kill Gus because it's like killing a real kid to him. Mm-hmm. You know, someone who could communicate has real thoughts, not just a beast and everything. So, because there's becomes... plenty of them that are nonverbal, and but they're intelligent still. You saw that in the episode. Some of the kids had to do sign language and stuff. And, yeah, and some of them chose not to talk. Exactly. <laughs> they, they just didn't want to. Exactly. Yeah. And, and some of them couldn't. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But they, and it, it was just really interesting to see. And, you know, that's to him you know that's when he started going oh there's more to this than just you know a norm you know just a kid you know just a creature that can speak a little bit or mimic people he this kid could actually has real thoughts he actually had a parent he knows he has he's aware of his surroundings Mm -hmm. and everything and that really threw the doctor for a loop and then he started going you know, oh, wait, there's more to it. What do you remember? And then, you know, before that, Gus, you got to tell me, where did you come from type thing? In in the first season, he's really a relatable, sympathetic character. And yes. in the second season is when he becomes obsessed, obsessed with the cure. Yes. 
-hmm. not so much i don't think to save his wife or to save humanity but in order to lessen his guilt because exactly. no, he right. feels like well the ends can't just justi justify the means if i don't reach the ends like i have to reach the ends because i have to feel like everything i've done that's been horribly wrong is for a good cause and and it means something and if i don't come up with a cure then mm -hmm. it's all like i've just been doing Fair bad enough. things I'm, i've been a failure i've been you know doing horrible things you know that's why and there's re no redemption the look on his face when it went from a hundred percent and then to it no, 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 working. No. Oh, and then oh, it was oh, and then when the the uh, the moms set the whole lab on fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, when he yeah, went yeah. back and saw that, the look on his face—it's like everything I've worked for, that's, not worrying about his wife. No, nope, that's when you see the change of yeah. my work, what I'm what i'm going towards like my the the process that he went through he lost it all but he did lose his his wife which is was the main the initial purpose of him doing this oh completely completely end. yeah and i i think um you know i think uh it's really a a, a key moment too when ronnie visits the hybrids and realizes that her life has come at a at a cost that she can't she can't yeah. she can't uh justify mm -mm. what do you guys think of the whole thing you know with gus get getting caught in the lie you know about that they're not killing the kids or the kids are escaping because you remember he did that to help you know lessen the fear for the other kids and and that's all it was it was just uh, it i think any of us would try to do something like that especially for for kids you know try to ease their mind a little bit so i i completely saw what where he was coming from with it even as a child trying to just calm them down they're in a very bad situation as it is so yeah. him telling them you know oh you know he made it out I kind of knew as soon as he told him that without knowing anything, they were probably going to find out what was happening and it was just going to be oh, bad, good. but they good old big mouth Wendy him. had to ruin yeah. that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I think also they, they grew up in different environments too. I think Wendy and the rest of the colony has grown up with uh, Eden who has in the safe Haven has, has been very transparent and has tried to teach them to do the right thing, to not lie, to tell the truth and everything like that. Whereas Gus has been around a little bit and he's had a lot of people not tell him things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when he finds out about him, what do they say? Well, that was for your own protection. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a case where he's actually doing that. He feels like he needs to do that because that's what adults do. Um, and yes, it does backfire on him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, like it backfires on all the adults who try to do that to him. <laughs> right. Oh, it ha it backfires big time on Big Man a couple of times. Oh yeah. Oh there, yeah. Especially this season, where the truth about what he was doing when he was with the Last Men and everything, you know, it, it, you know, Eden left him behind when they were going to go back to rescue the kids. Yeah, she couldn't trust him. No. And then he still I mean, ice cream truck. He didn't know he was going to be so good at getting the hybrids because that's what he did like really well before as a last man. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, so uh so we also get introduced, I think. Yes, we get introduced to Mrs. Zhang, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, we get introduced to some other the three colony people like too. But uh, I don't think they, uh, I don't think they're around anymore. Yeah, no. three became the one. <laughs> the yeah, one. at the end. So, and actually, you're right. Uh, Mrs. Zhang is the is now the, the de facto leader of of, of humanity. Mm -hmm. She's from Texas. Uh, you could tell from she's her. She's from accent. Texas. Yeah, yeah. Um, Rosalind Child is doing a, a a little bit of a draw there, uh, which is fine. She's great. I love seeing her. 
Uh, she's great. And it's, I don't see her play a baddie too often. So this is kind of fun. Uh, I, I don't remember her from the comics and maybe I need to refresh myself in the comic about the comics, but I do remember those hybrid wolf boy things, whatever she's got in there, because those in the comics are very, very, very violent and they are very intense and they are very like dangerous. Um, and that is because we haven't seen, we, we've all, all the hybrids that we've seen outside of Peter and even he was kind of just misguided have been kind of kind and good, right? We haven't seen like bad hybrids. And I think then season three, we're going to see hybrid versus hybrid violence. Oh, you're going to have to, you know. You're definitely going to see. And once that. again, I'm going to worry about Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> yes, as always. Now, I have a question for you guys because um, that's uh, the, the debate here in our household. Do you guys think Abbott is, in fact, dead? Yes. Because he makes it later in the comic book. And the, the Helen, I don't think she's, I can't remember if she's in it or not, but I've seen both things either he's not dead or she's the new for, he's actually dead and she's the new villain like the big baddie now no she's the new big baddie i think for the, i think uh, so too the, i think there's, there's only one more season left it's not like mm -hmm. they're going to be doing multiple seasons yeah. and they've already filmed a lot of season three already because they wanted to film because of the kids getting older yeah christian's Correct. not is getting older so they have to film it while they can and it is you know, the story is not big enough that it needs to be more than three seasons, I don't think. Mm -hmm. exactly. So I think, you know, I think it's going to come to a suitable conclusion. Um, I feel confident in that. I mean, they've done such a good job. The production values on this are outstanding. A lot of beautiful shots of scenery. Um, and uh, the cast is fun. It's just well made. It's a well made yeah. show. Um, but yeah, I, I get the feeling that the general is dead. Uh, I'm not sure about Johnny. But I'm I would put more money on if Johnny was alive, although I don't think he would, you know, rise up and be a bad guy. So yeah. uh, you know, that remains to be seen. But I I really thought towards the end, when they were fighting off the general, that Tommy uh, that that Johnny was gonna show up and his last act would be to, you know, pay back his brother. Mm -hmm. But that of course didn't happen. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. We we got the amazing buffalo scene instead. Oh, we got the awesome. amazing buffalo scene, which <laughs> I don't know how you shoot that. I mean, that was that was that was well done. That did not look like overly CG'd at all, or that looked really devastating. I yeah, no. Uh and it also introduced the idea that Gus might have the ability to talk to other hybrids. Yes. Yep. And I, I don't think we've really explored that yet. Right, well, those, the, weren't, the those weren't hybrids. Those were or, or actual animals. Oh, or actually, just animals yeah. in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And I think no, I definitely think he has the power to talk to, you know, to call type thing. And it it might have been just because he was under distress type thing mm -hmm. that he was able to do it, or he might have that power. Mm. Who knows? As we like to say. So we've got uh, so we've got a third season coming. Yes. We've got uh, Zhang and her nasty hybrid boys. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> uh, oh, man, they are so nasty in the comics. Uh, and we have them. I don't know if we're going to see the other hybrids. Well, I don't know how that's going to work. I mean, we've got we've got uh, Gus and company, big man and everybody going to Alaska. Now, is is Zhang going to follow them or is she are we going to see the hybrids where they are now colonizing and maybe that's going to get attacked somehow? I think she's going to go to Alaska. Yes. Yeah, I, I okay. think they yeah, I think they you, you don't think you'll see Bobby and them again. I don't. I would like to, but I think they put all the kids with the couple just kind of, a, it's too much to keep up with. I, I, in my opinion for, for the third like season MacGuffin type thing, you know, they yeah. said, yeah. So they, yeah. they have them, you know, and, tucked away. and all of our key characters are going to Alaska. Like nobody yes. like Wendy and, and bear are not staying, yeah. you know, with the hybrids, they're going to Alaska, even though bear said she was going to take care of the hybrids. She promised that she was going to take care of the hybrids. And she's like, I'm going to Alaska. 
<laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because that's where we're all going. So, uh, so yeah, we're going to go to Alaska in the third season. Anything else do you want to see or predict to happen in the third season? Well, we're going to find out who rescued the doctor. Basically. Okay. It'll be very interesting to see who, what was that? Is because it did not look like human footprints. No, no. So it'll be very interesting to see what we got. Maybe there's an adult mm-hmm. hybrid of some kind that up there that's been, you know, that came out of what happened up in Alaska. And that might tie into how the children were born that way. Yeah, I'm, so. I'm interested to see the, the wrap up and kind of the, if they do the time jump to to the future see see what happens um see if it's kind of like the end of the comics or if they leave it open somehow um because that's always also a possibility um yeah sweet tooth the next generation is going to be coming yeah. here, so, you, know. <laughs> you never well, know. that's what that's what sweet tooth the return was oh, uh yeah. in the comics um james brolin has been narrating this the entire time do we think that's gus i think that's gus mm-hmm. interesting i would think so that would that would be my thought. I think I think this is, Gus is telling us his story. Yeah. And uh, you know, if it is like the comics, I think a, a perfect ending would be to show Gus, older Gus, old old Gus. Yes. I don't know if you're going to put James Brolin. Are, are you going to get everything. James Brolin and uh, <laughs> yeah. and Adler, but, of antlers? But uh, uh, sitting around the campfire telling all the baby hybrids or whatever, all the kids, uh, this story, I think, I think that's, that would, that to me would be, um, a perfect ending. Uh, mm-hmm. Cause I don't think this, this show is really going to set out to really, you know, swerve you or create some sort of uh twist or anything like that. I think there's going to be some, some dramatic moments for sure. But this show doesn't seem to be interested in in that in twisting as much as it does like just telling a good story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and we got uh, some we got some twists in this one. It, it didn't really affect much. It was it was cool that they did so that way you right. didn't really see it coming. So so I'm I'm okay with that as well. Like you know, twist or, or not, they, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Do you think we see Ron, Ronnie again? I I don't know. I don't think we will. No. No, I think we're I think her story's done. Me too. Yeah. So I the definitely... doctor is on his way to Alaska as well. Yeah. Thanks to so, uh, everybody. So Ronnie riding behind. off into basically with the horse, you know. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so and I don't think she has that much longer to live anyway. Yeah, you're probably Correct. right. You're probably right. So and if she shows up in Alaska, that's where I go. Jump the shark. There you go. <laughs> the hybrid shark? Exactly. The shark Terrifying. track. Terrifying. <laughs> Baby shark. Uh, anything else about uh, this series as a whole? Or anything you want to see from uh, the third season uh, that uh, you really appreciate about the show? I'm, I'm confident they'll do a good job in wrapping it. If this is the, the last season, like uh, we've been saying um, I'm confident they'll do a good job in wrapping it up. Um, they've, they've done it so far. So I'm just, I'm just anxious and excited to, to see the next season and see, see the wrap up. It just as a whole has, has been a really good show. Really well done. I can't disagree with that. Yeah. yeah. And completely right. as Mike pointed out, I believe they, they started filming it last month. So uh, hopefully they are either finished or are close to finishing and it won't be affected by any delays with the writer strike or anything like that. And that we can get it mm-hmm. pretty soon, maybe by this time next year, if not sooner. Is it, yep. is it filmed? Where is it filmed? Is it up in Canada or is it? Uh, it is filmed. Uh, let's see. Uh, it is uh, filmed in New Zealand. That's what I, I wasn't a hundred percent sure. I had a feeling. Everything yeah. cool like that's New Zealand. So yeah, it's filmed in New Zealand. So uh so it's not Yellowstone? No. <laughs> the deceit. Sorry to disappoint you, dude. <laughs> no. Sorry, you can't go there. They lied. Them. They lied to you. 
So, uh, yeah, so we'll be looking forward to season three whenever it drops. Uh, come back and see us because we will be happy to let you know our thoughts. Uh, Joseph, thank you so much. And uh, we're going to be right back and we're going to close out the show. Hi, YouTube folks. That's right. We're back. And we got some bonus stuff for you guys, as always. And one of the thoughts I had with Sweet Tooth is this was, you know, a darker tale. And, you know, it's definitely not a children's show at all and everything. And compared to, you know, with what they did with the comic and everything, do you do you think think there was any characters that you know adaptations that don't meet up with what you expected or does everyone pretty much match up or surpass with the tv show what do you guys think and it could go out to either of you guys go ahead mike uh well to be honest um i i think in the comic Sweet Tooth feels to me that Gus feels to me a little older right. than he is in this show. And that dynamic uh, changes this show. I, you're right. It's not for itty bitty kids, mm -mm. but I, I would say that Sweet Tooth is, is PG, uh, maybe PG 13. Although if you, if you go by guardians of the galaxy volume three, which is PG 13, that's closer to R than this is. Uh, so, um, because it's definitely got some mature themes and, uh, some situations that I think, Hey, make me nervous. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, you know, it kind of, it, it does make me laugh because even, I guess the reason why I feel like this, this series is Canadian is because everything that Jeff Lemire writes just drips Canadian-ness, right? Like, and in the book, a uh, big man is a hockey player because it's Canadian, right? Like mm -hmm. here he's a football player. And I always have to forget that he's not, I mean, I look at him and I don't think he's a hockey player. He doesn't look like a hockey player, mm -hmm. at least in the show. But uh, I think they develop a lot more of uh, the kids uh, or the characters in the show more. I don't remember general abbott getting near as much depth in the comic as he does here uh they look almost everybody looks different uh than they uh -huh. do in the comic which so you're not really getting like a panel by panel like oh i recognize that i mean every even like i said bobby i had to i had to think about that because i was like oh man i don't i don't remember bobby from the comic but then now you mentioned it now i'm thinking about oh yeah he doesn't look anything like what he does in the in the show so uh but i i don't fault the show for that because the show's show has to do what it has to do mm -hmm. and it's decided to take a much lighter tone mm -hmm. telling this story and to be honest with you at this time of my life i would i i applaud that because i'm not really looking to to get something because i we've seen so many post apocalyptic stories that are dark and intense Mm -hmm. I like the fact that this is an alternative to that. Yeah, and I, I think it comes down to it's there's a lot of I mean look at uh, Disney with Marvel all the different adaptations all the different movies they've done um it it all comes down to the medium that you're using and the the director the production is just their view their their vision of of what what they're doing um so like you said it's not going to be panel panel per panel but they did tell a story and they made it work. And it's like you said, it's, <laughs> it's good that they use like the cute kids and, and making Bobby cute because it, it makes it more marketable, more, I guess, relatable this day and age than, you know, what you look in the, when you see the, in the comic book, um, it's kind of like, Ew. so, yeah. <laughs> so, Ew. you know, uh, it, from Ew. a, from a production standpoint and from like a, a I guess a, a sales standpoint, like I, I go back to the, the Grogu thing is like, what are you going to show? What are, what are, what are you going to put out there to attract people to watch this? So you have that perfect combination of dark and cute. And I think they did it very well. Totally understandable. 
I agree yeah, with Bobby. You. They give I get they they give Bobby a a kerchief in the show, and that makes so much difference. <laughs> <laughs> if they did in the comic man he would look so much better oh man he's so i mean no offense to him but bobby is so ugly in the, looking in the comic and and i think that's the point i think with jeff's comic version it's it's almost easy to think of these hybrids as just plain wrong animals abominations if you will mm-hmm. because they don't look attractive they don't look cute but here they do look adorable and uh you know so you've got that going like working against people who are wanting to to them. do them on mm-hmm. yep. exactly you even have the cute little elephant boy and you know yeah. and the squirrel girl and you know it's you know oh yeah a bunch of them there they're like that yeah they make a pretty good team if they put themselves to get uh, put it all together Mm -hmm. exactly so it's just it's interesting how that works and everything and i'm never a fan of post-apocalyptic you know it's like this is another world where no i'm i'd be dead in this one i don't i wouldn't want to be living in this one and i'd be like uh i'm feeling the pinky there's there's always an always an issue there's somebody who's gonna hide that they got bit and then just go after you Mm -hmm. there's always an issue somebody wants to take over so it's like walking dead same thing Mm -hmm. Exactly. I wouldn't want to live under General Abbott or live in Freet or was it, you know, Factory Town or whatever it was. That That's probably what would kill me more than the sick. I just probably I wouldn't be a last man. I wouldn't sign up for that crap. And that would probably kill me before the sick got to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, agreed. Agreed, agreed. So <laughs> exactly. And it's like, oh, well. <laughs> been a good life yep. I've done a lot. So, but it, it's it'd be interesting to see because you know they're going to Alaska in the next season and when they get there you know you know what are they going to find and you know it's going to be it'll be interesting and you know they're going up in street clothes you know Wendy is in a little dress and everything it's like where are they going to get cold weather? I'm sure they're going to stop somewhere on the way and get some. You know, because, you know, there's a Walmart on the way or something. Yeah. Hey, know. there's everything on the way. Like, ev- nothing is off limits on the way. Oh. I'm sure everything has been stolen or taken in the stores. And If they can find gas for yeah. cars and planes, they can find a Walmart. Yeah, good point. Touche. Yeah. Touche. So... It'll be very interesting to see. I'm going to be very curious to see where this goes. And I'm hoping that, you know, it gets here sooner than later because I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> and, you know, we haven't heard if the writer strike actually has delayed, you know, production. As far as I know, it's, yeah, it hasn't, but I don't, I don't know that for sure. But it's and, also, and the fact that it's being filmed in New Zealand might help us. It might, it might help a lot, you know. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see, as we like to say. Okay, YouTube folks, that's your bonus for tonight. Thank you, as always, for watching. And, you know, if you made it this far, please give us a thumbs up. We would really appreciate it, as we like to say. All right, let's wrap this sucker up. So that's going to wrap up another episode of the Earth Station Wood podcast. I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. You know, Joseph, you made it. You did it, yeah. dude. And your finger hasn't shaken all that much. That's pretty oh, awesome. It hasn't been on screen, but uh, <laughs> I'm a goner. Oh, no. Oh, no. Anything you want to <laughs> promote or anything you want to shout out about? Uh, no, not really. Not really a whole lot going on. I have Chameleon Cosplay on Instagram. I do have Chameleon Greens. I uh, have a little side business growing aquarium plants and fishies and stuff. So I'm trying Very to cool. get that to take off, but just stuff that I enjoy and I uh, get an abundance of plants. So see if I can sell them. But other yeah, than that, that's, awesome. that's that's really it. Just working and waiting for uh, the next time I can go to Dragon Con. Cool. Mm. Where can people find your your pictures or your costumes and stuff like that? Uh, chameleon chameleon cosplay um, on Instagram, and uh, I do have a Facebook uh, page, but I think I haven't done anything with it since like 2019. So you know. It's under construction. Facebook's for for grandparents. It's okay. It's okay. my my mom likes it. My dad exactly. Likes it. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. There you go. 
Awesome, dude. Thank you for being here. Thank you guys for having me. And Mr. Mike Gordon, we made it through another one, sir. We did. And as always, it's my pleasure. Anything you want to shout out about, sir? Uh, yeah. Speaking of uh, comics, uh, the uh, team that is responsible for the first two volumes of the hit comic Kamikaze uh, have uh, finally released the long-awaited continuation. Volume three is now available uh, at their store um, and uh, their online store. And of course, they'll have it at conventions. But uh, yeah, the team of uh, Alan Tupper, Carrie Tupper, and uh, Havana Nin are, are, are doing such a great job with this book. And it's it's it, and when the first volume came out, it really made an impact. And, you know, it's been a while since they've got a chance to do uh, to continue it. So uh, this is a welcome surprise that volume three is finally out and done. Uh, I'm really happy for them and I'm really anxious to check it out myself. So, uh, yeah, it's, if you like, uh, anime type style action, uh, Kamikaze is, you should definitely check it out. That's awesome. That is really awesome. Cool. And they're local. Exactly. Even better. Local is better. Always buy local folks. That's right. Find your comic book and find out if it's from your area or not. At least sound it'll be because it's fresh. Exactly. It's fresher that way. Exactly. Has a more crisp taste to it. It it tastes crispier on your fingers as you turn the pages. <laughs> okay, my shout out real quick. Um, some of you might have noticed last week and into this week, we have a new background here on Earth Station One. And we have a very, very nice new sign. And it is just not a flat sign. It is a 3D wood carved sign that was created for us here on the network. And it is created by Unique Crafts by Jen. So we will have a link to it up in our show notes and everything. And, you know, she took my design and her and I had a meeting and, you know, she said, you know, we can do this, this and this. And it, they brought our logo literally to life, which is pretty awesome and everything. And it's all three, it's all 3D. And if you go back onto it, all the letters are all, you know, wood, you know, carved out and everything. It is pretty fantastic what she did. And like when I opened it, it was just like, wow, this is so cool. And it's heavy too, because <laughs> solid wood. So. It's pretty awesome. And, you know, I could have even gotten it bigger, but, you know, we don't get that much Patreon money here on the network. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty it looks awesome. It's really nice. It, it came out awesome. It really, really did. And, you know, thank you to Jen for meeting with me. And, you know, we're going to, she's going to actually be, um, we're going to become a new affiliate for her. And she's going to be one of our sponsors. So nice. in the next couple of weeks, we'll start having a link up on our webpage and everything that, you know, if you click through and order through it, you know, we'll get a little money for it. And, you know, she'll, she'll make a lot of money because, you know, she does great work and everything. And she, she's done, you know, signs for big companies, small companies or podcasts now. So it's pretty awesome. So definitely it's unique crafts by Jen. So, and she's based out of Miami. So definitely. So it's pretty awesome that she's, she's doing this kind of stuff and, using her RT talent and everything for it. So definitely check it out. All right, folks, that's going to wrap it up for tonight. Thank you, everybody, for watching and listening and wherever you do, YouTube, Podcast World, wherever. And, you know, we appreciate you guys so, so much. And we couldn't do this without you, as we like to say. You know, we're here to chat. You know, we could talk about Sweet Tooth all night and have fun with it. But we love talking to you guys about it and everything. So definitely, please leave us feedback. We definitely would love to hear from you guys. Your thoughts on this. Feedback at Earth Station 1 is the is the best way to do it. Or on, or if you're on YouTube, just leave a comment. We definitely would love to hear from it. And we'll respond, we do respond to our comments when we get them and everything up on YouTube. So definitely check it out. And, you know, if you can, give us a thumbs up. We would appreciate it. And you know what? We got a lot of different things going on right now, and we have some new T-shirts coming out very, very soon. I started doing some new designs over the weekend, so we are going to have for our T Public store 
some new stuff and including science is real t-shirt you know it's not a fake thing so definitely you know that's gonna be one of the designs we're working on and you know it's gonna be a ton of fun and we got other you know you know wibbly wobbly timey wimey is one of them that's going to be coming out so it's going to be the new 60th anniversary earth station who t-shirt not 60th anniversary of earth station who but you know what i mean we're not quite there yet we're not there we're close but we're not there yet so check out our t public store folks we got some great t-shirts coming and we got some great stuff up there so definitely check it out all you have to do is go to either the earth station one website or go to the ESO network website and we have a link right up to the T public store or just go to T public and search up Earth, the ESO network. We got a full shop up there with a lot of other stuff up there. So it's pretty cool stuff, including the Darren t-shirt, the Earth station one 700 episode t-shirt. You know, we got a lot of great stuff and, you know, even the flop cast has a t-shirt to so folks, you know, if you like chickens, it's always good for that type of stuff. So it's cool. So definitely check it out. Our T public store. Also want to say thank you to our patrons. That's right. Our patrons are our lifeblood here on ESO. And you know, want to thank, of course, we want to thank Jill Sanders, Wildcard, Rob McIntyre, Jacob Holler, Mark Heffernan, Jerry Chandler, Stephen Murphy, and Mary Ogle. Name sounds familiar. I don't know where I've heard that name before. You know, thank you everybody to who are support our patreon and you too can support pay us up on patreon by just going to patreon.com slash eso network for as little as a dollar a month you too can get your name right up on the podcast isn't that cool folks so definitely check it out also of course like we said feedback is always welcome and definitely please if you get a chance tell your friends tell your neighbors about us that's how we grow and you know if you like us like and subscribe up on youtube you know or leave a click on the little star that's how you know we get a new episode coming out because we're coming to you now twice a week not just once twice a week so that's pretty awesome and by the time this goes live you might also have a new dragon con report on the way so look folks you know we got a lot of things and we're under 90 days till dragon con oh my god i hope your cosplays are started folks as we like to say so definitely <laughs> check it out so yes, on behalf like, of myself, maybe. Mike Faber, of course, Mr. Mike Gordon, and of course, Chameleon Cosplay himself, you know, it's pretty awesome. You know, it's cool. It's great. It's awesome. You know, Joseph, you're an awesome guy. We love you. Thank you for joining us. It's great. Thank to you. Love, love you guys. Thank you for having me on and uh, anytime. And not don't wait as long to come back onto the show next time. Okay. We'll do. All right. We'll see you all soon on Earth Station One. Peace, dude. And never to see you. You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek.